Hello and welcome to another episode of Steel Fur Supremacy with, of course, me, Steel Fur, your London-based flesh and blood content creator. Um, today's video, quite exciting. So every so often, there's there's so many deck texts and guides and views and lists being put out on the internet. And you know what? I thought it would be a good idea if occasionally we just sat down and reviewed some. And I'll take the lists from other content creators and we're just going to sit we're going to we're going to go through their list listen to their analysis figure out if we agree with it and then we're going to play some games with that list and see how we think that list is done and we did this before with that levia video where we rated that levia list from the wraith times um and i just think that that video was really good um both in terms of me personally just sitting down and reviewing that list and seeing how it went but also in terms of the conversation that engendered um both for me with other levia players and obviously you now all know that i really do rate levia um and also just for the conversation in the community in terms of people who tried that video, tried that deck, you know, really liked it. So on the review for today, because it's a hot topic, is of course the exciting Lexi Ride the Lightning by Red Zone Rogue. So we're going to put this on um, and we're going to sort of listen to it. Um, from the set, not just from the set, but actually my favorite hero in the entire game. Well, one of my three favorite heroes in the entire game, my favorite class. For sure. Anyway, we have Lexi Livewire. This is a classic constructed deck, and with Ranger being my absolute favorite class in the game, I could not wait to start brewing Lexi. I am so excited. This hero is a ton of fun to play. I've done some a uh, couple like preliminary games so far, and it's just an absolute blast. The deck plays so much better than you're used to if you're a uh, Ranger player. And um, there's some really, really fun stuff you can do here. So Azalea fans, Ranger fans, there's some cool stuff to be had here. I'm still building Azalea for classic. So it is just worth noting that, I, you know, spoilers, uh, this deck is much, much better than anything Azalea has ever put in front of me. Um, I think that's just worth acknowledging, right? Straight out of the bat. Constructed. But uh, I, I definitely wanted to start off. I am not still building Azalea for Classic Constructed. That is not happening. It's not a thing. With Lexi. I should also note that this deck is an aggro lightning style deck. I still want to build a uh, more controlling ice deck as well. But uh, the lightning aggro seemed like the easiest. And it was kind of like more my style anyway. I also want to mention... I have tested the ice control deck. I do not actually rate it. Um, I think it's fine, but the damage output is very low. And then the one turn that you fail to deliver on the control because you draw the wrong cards, you actually really, really run into problems where you lose control and then tempo swings back to your opponent. But that's the story for another video. Before I get started, everyone always asks about these hard cases. This is a... But there's a new... Let's do this. Live wire, lightning aggro to singles. So definitely, definitely check that out. And if you do, use my promo code Rogue at checkout. But yeah, I don't mind boosting someone else. So we're obviously watching his video. So you know, if you want to go, if you're in the US and you want to go to Channel Fireball, you can see he's got a reference code here. Uh, but obviously, go to the original video and get that link, and that'll work just fine. Without further ado, let's get started talking about my Lexi. Live wire, lightning aggro, classic constructed deck. I am so excited. I'm so excited. Let's do this. All right, let's start talking about Lexi Live Wire and her role in this classic constructed deck. I think this deck, first of all, is both a lot of fun and pretty good. It's actually pretty powerful, especially for this kind of like my uh, initial build. This is a build that I'm going to be refining over the next couple months as we approach nationals. And honestly, if I compete in the event in any capacity, I'm going to be bringing some version of this deck, or maybe Viscerai, but I'm, I'm a huge fan of Ranger, obviously, and I would love to bring Ranger to the calling and do well. So here we have Lexi Livewire, the elemental Ranger hero. Basically, very standard stats, four hand size, 40 starting life total, essence of ice and lightning, and a once per turn action of turning a face down card in your arsenal face up, if it's a lightning card, your next attack this turn gains go again. And if it's a ice card, create a frostbite token under target hero's control. Honestly, we're not really going to focus 
too much on that frostbite because we are running a very lightning heavy Lexi. I didn't make a single frostbite token when I was playing this deck, so that gives you an indication of when he says we're not going to focus on it. Yeah, I don't think it comes up at all, and that is fine. Deck. In fact, there's only a couple ice cards in the deck and the sideboard to begin with, so we're not really going to talk about that. Well, maybe we may talk about ice a little bit when we get there, but this is, for the most part, a very, very aggressive deck where we just want to shoot a lot of arrows, have our arrows blot out the sky. So, yeah. That is our Lexi here. And then we have our equipment loadout. For my current build, I don't have any other options for the equipment. This is just what we run no matter what. If Wizard becomes a thing and we need more Arcane Barrier, then we can get more Arcane Barrier. But our Bullseye Bracers here do have that Arcane Barrier on them. First up... The bullseye, bullseye Brace is, of course, also good against um, Briar, just having as a default. I don't think we really need to go into the equipment too much. Obviously, you're going to use Tunic for resources. Having one block is also kind of important for some of the later aggro matters. Bullseye Braces is really good for just getting in that, that, you know, that arrow that you needed to get in when you run out of Voltaire charges. Um, you can use it for an extra endless arrow swing. You can use it for a lot of different things, as we'll see in the games when they come up. So let's just flick through Snapdragon. I haven't didn't use this once during my testing games with the the equipment, um, but I can see where it would be used. So I'd rather have the utility. Um, Perch Grapplers does block, however, which is another alternative if you just want a bit more armor. Um, otherwise, you may as well just have Snapdragons for for options. Um, New Horizon is amazing for all of the reasons that become apparent the second you play Ranger for any amount of time. Just the ability to arsenal something and also still be able to play arrows is vital for the deck. Um, in one of the games you'll see I did block with this, but it was under duress. Um, and I was very upset with, with the blocking um, for this. Uh, Voltaire is pretty straightforward. A lot of the times, to be fair, you do just give it plus one, especially if you're using like a Bolton shot or something. Um, but go again is vital as well for the deck. Um, and the fact that you will use this twice and then snapshot into a third use is really important. Um, anyway, sorry, that's enough of me. Let's get back to the video. Loading it up twice with New Horizon and just going to town because we can just give all of our arrows go again. We have built in go again. We also have, you know, the go again from Lexi, but we really don't need to use that. It's mostly coming from Voltaire, though we, we could possibly use it from Lexi. And so that that's the... So I actually found in my testing that we use the go again from Lexi quite a lot. Um, you basically, the reason the go again from Lexi is so good is that you reveal a lightning card like Electrify or Lightning Press, you were going to reveal anyway. You That gives you go again, which means with Voltaire, you load for plus one and you don't need to load for go again. So instantly your attack is coming in at a much more awkward break point, like four or five. And suddenly it means that the pressure is a bit higher, which means actually the go again from Lexi leads to a much more complicated block from your opponent. So, for example, if I'm coming in with a an arrow like a frazzle or a buzzbolt, and the first thing I do is reveal a lightning press, give it go again, then give it plus one from Voltaire, I'm coming in for five, potentially eight. That lightning press is going to mess with my opponent's blocks for the rest of the turn, whether I use it or not, therefore creating a much more interesting dynamic than it would if it wasn't revealed, which I think is quite interesting. Equipment loadout, you can kind of get an idea of what we're doing here. We want to load up our arsenal, basically have six card hands or more or more and um, just fire off a ton of arrows. This is the main deck, the deck that I typically run. And then we also have some sideboard options that are technically part of the deck. By the way, I shouldn't have mentioned the entire deck list for this is in the description down below from FabDB. So the first couple cards I want to show you and I want to talk about are very important and very spicy. Okay, so we have Blink. Blink is a zero cost lightning instant for three blue pitch. It says gain one action point and then you can only gain action points during your action phase. This card is integral to this deck, not just for going wide, but for the next card we want to talk about. So we're running three blinks. So just, you know, for zero cost, gain an action point, right? Why would we want to do that? Well, so we can do more things. What more things would we like to do? Well, what about drawing some cards and then gaining an action point? So Toma Fiendo is a one cost, two pitch, generic action blocks for two. It says, draw two cards. If it's played from Arsenal, gain one life for each card in your hand. That's quite good. We're going to be loading up our Arsenal quite often 
And what you can do with this normally is use something like the Mage Master Boots to gain the action point to play a card, you know, after you play the Tome of Fiendle. But in Lexi, all you need is a blink. So you can play your Tome of Fiendle, gain your life, and then afterwards play. So in one game I played, actually, the way I did this combo, <laughs> I played, I had Blink in Arsenal. I three of a kind did from hand. Then I Tome of Fiendald, and then I blinked from Arsenal. And another turn, I had Blink in my hand with the three of a kind. So I played the Blink first, three of a kind did with my Tunic resource, then Tome of Fiendald, and then did my turn. Um, so yeah, Blink and Tome of Fiendal is a... Um, it's the golden, golden combo. Uh, you could also run yellow flash if you are worried about having cards that don't block. But to be honest, this is a very aggressive deck, so you don't really need to block. Your main focus does need to be on the action point. And also it helps you with Prism, helps you break those auras, because Prism will be a difficult matchup for Lexi. Because of course, if Prism goes into auras and you can't control them because you've only got so many arrows, you're going to have issues there. So it's worth just keeping an idea of why Blink is slightly better than Flash, because um, action points are better than go again. Play your Blink at instant speed and gain that action point so you can pop off. It's really sweet. Blink and Tomo Fiendel, I think, are a fantastic combo where you can have huge, huge turns. I'm only running two Tomes in this deck because it's kind of not great if you don't have the Blink. The Blink is just fantastic by itself, but the Tome is, is kind of not great if you don't have the Blink. There's some other things you can do with it, but because you can activate uh, Voltaire at instant speed, right? So you can still... So I will disagree with this slightly. Um, there are going to be plenty of times where just playing a Tome to heal and draw some cards for next turn is perfectly fine. You could Because you because remember, and, and this is important with Ranger, you can Arsenal... A card and then obviously do it next turn so if you've got nothing in arsenal except the tome of fiendal then just going into a turn where you know you just tome of fiendal with a tunic counter draw up to six and then arsenal a really good non-attack action and then go into your next turn with more cards or even a turn where you don't get the um the go again but you do get the tome of fiendal um three of a kind combo and you just draw that massive hand with those uh with that life gain it can still be worth it just to take the damage gain the life back and then just see where you end up in a turn later when you've got seven cards in your hand draw above your maximum hand size and use voltaire um but you wouldn't be able to shoot the arrows off because you do not have an action point so yeah just running two of those and then oh i'm so i'm so glad this card is finally going to see some play and i'm so stoked this has been one of my favorite cards ever since I started playing Flesh and Blood. Well, a little bit after. I started with Welcome to Wraith, and uh, Arcane Rising was the first set I really got into. Three of a kind. So a one-cost red pitch card blocks for two. It says, draw three cards. Until end of turn, you may only play cards from Arsenal. Go again. Well, we have two Arsenal slots. So drawing three cards and then just dumping a bunch of arrows into our Arsenal using Voltaire and the resources we gain by drawing those cards just makes it so we can just pop off and have absurd turns, actually absurd turns, because, you know, we can activate Voltaire twice. Voltaire is an instant ability. And so just playing the cards from Arsenal after you drop them in with Voltaire's instant ability is crazy. We are running a full set of the three of a kind. You can even, you can even, you know, screen <laughs> screenshot the three of a kind holding the three, three of a kind. Yeah. Awesome. It's so sweet. So I'm so glad this, this package right here, makes me so happy you don't even you don't even know triple blink triple three of a kind and double tome of fiendle you know you could try to be greedy and run two tome of fiendles but i i mean three tome of fiendles but i think two is a good option at least to start at least to start so you know going further going forward and refining the deck we might you know cut it down to one which would make me very sad or um, bring it up to three The Lexi Specialization, fantastic card. It's a yellow pitch card. One resource, four attack, three defense. Uh, has lightning fusion. Yeah, sorry, just changing the audio there a bit. It's not uh, bad. It's not great. Light it up, obviously. It's a fantastic card. It says, if light it up was fused, it gains. If this hits a hero, deal one damage to them for each equipment they control. Uh, to note, weapons are not equipment, right? 
uh, has to say the literally has to say the word equipment on the card. The shield, of course, from old him does count. It says equipment on. But it also says if lighted up deals damage to a hero equal to or greater than the number of equipment they control, the equipment they control lose and can't gain activated abilities until the end of their next turn. That's sweet. This is really sweet. This card is awesome. Deals a ton of damage. Looks amazing in foil as well. I have three foils of this. It's absolutely gorgeous. And kind of does like a hosing hate bear type of effect. Really, really good. Um, I like to... I mean, it's a four attack card, right? So you have a pretty good break point. So pumping it up for one with the Voltaire is good. But, you know, you could just give it go again as part of a long chain of attacks. I would probably try to save this for the end just so you can maximize on that hit effect. But still... Using this with like a lightning press at the end of a long attack chain. Like I've done this as like the third attack in a chain and they've already blocked because they were worried about the on hit effects from the other one and suddenly you're coming in with a five strength fused lighted up and they know you have a lightning press. It, it just wrecks. Quite good. The fact that it pitches for a two is also quite good. We, we want to have a decent number of yellow and blues in this deck because we want to activate our Voltaire twice and that's a pretty resource intensive card. Because, you know, it's going to pick up two resources. We have Dazzling Crescendo. Beautiful card with beautiful art by Sam Yang. This is a zero cost, four attack, arrow, three defense, lightning fusion. If you fuse it, it gains go again. So this is a card that you can just, if you can fuse it, just do that plus one on your Voltaire and have a zero cost, five attack yeah. arrow coming in with go again, which is pretty good. Yeah, <laughs> it's really good. Zero good. for five. So this is just a... The only problem is it's not zero for five because really it'll cost you one from Voltaire. But... Or you're popping off with your three of a kinds. Any of our zero cost cards are gonna be so good with the uh, three of a kinds. So really good. Mm -hmm. Running a full full set of the reds on that one. Uh, also running a full set of the reds, we have uh, Frazzle. So Frazzle is a one cost five attack. And that, that's kind of the, the break point you wanna see here. Either zero for four or one for five. And one for five is pretty good. It says lightning fusion. If Frazzle was fused, whenever an attack would deal damage this turn, it instead deals that much plus one so just you know once again really good for those go wide turns pumping up the damage of all your attacks that actually deal damage and all of these arrows are going to block for three so i'm not going to mention that every single time but they all block for three so this is one mm -hmm. cost five blocks for three running three of them next up we have a card that's very similar but also a little different this one is buzzbolt so once again one cost five this is the red pitch version Lightning Fusion. If it was fused, whenever an attack hits a hero this turn, it deals one damage to them. So the, the big difference here, right, is this whenever an attack would deal damage, it instead deals that much plus one. And this one says whenever an attack hits a hero, it deals one damage to them. That's not the same. Functionally, if you're just attacking with no other bonuses or anything, they're kind of the same dealing that one extra. But if you frazzle and hit them and then buzz bolt and hit them, when it hit, deals that one extra damage, it'll actually deal two damage because the Frazzle says it. whenever it deals damage, it deals that much plus one. So It also boosts things like Electrify. Um, if you were using Shock Charmers, it would boost Shock Charmers. Uh, he's not. He's gone for Bullseye Bracers, which I agree with um, for reasons of it just smoothing out some turns and giving you more width in terms of how long you can play but if you're running shock charmers and buzz bolt for example you could get that that little benefit off yeah uh sorry i mean that actually wait no that says hit doesn't it so you couldn't get that um but doesn't frazzle say uh, let's just remember where we are now yeah so frazzle um increases the damage from shock charmers but buzz bolt doesn't pump up your extra like little little ping damage we're not doing a lot of extra little ping damage in this build, but uh, keep that in mind for decks that you want to do that kind of stuff for. So uh, we do have three of the red buzz bolts and three of the yellow buzz bolts. Same thing, just attacks for four. Honestly, the difference between like Frazzle and Buzz Bolt are like up in the air. It might be better to run the yellow Frazzles over the yellow buzz bolts, but I think this is where I want to start. I'd actually rather have the extra little ping as opposed to this for, for now, just because of the way they interact. I'd rather have Frazzle and then Buzz Bolt to deal, deal with two. So that's what we're doing with the, uh, the Buzz Bolts. Also, we have some snapshots with beautiful artwork by Federico Musetti. This is a zero cost card. 
four attacks. So once again, zero for four. This one also has lightning fusion. If the snapshot was fused, you may activate abilities of bows you control an additional time as though it were an instant. This card is amazing for those huge turns with three of a kind where you're just popping off and you're just yeah. blowing your bow over and over again. So this is, that's what snapshot. Yeah, I mean, Snapshot just letting you use Voltaire once more is, is so impactful, so impactful. Because um, otherwise you have to rely on Reload, or you have to rely on your Bullseye Braces, which you can only use once per game, and have your Arcane Barrier on, so you may not want to use them, uh, depending on the hero you're playing against. So yeah, the Snapshot is massive. And I know some Lexi decks have been relying entirely on Snapshot just to get Death Dealer off, which I've heard is pretty cool in terms of combo, but I feel like it's better to have lots of good cards in your deck rather than just one gimmick. Right, not for your average turn. It's for those really big, explosive, three of a kind, and Tome of Fiendel turns. So you want to, you know, basically when you want to shoot your bow three times or more. So other than that, it's just a zero cost four, which is, like I said, pretty good. I'm also running the blue uh, expressly for that ability and pitch. So you know, this is a pretty good card to have for value, for uh, resource value, because it pitches for blue. And also, you still get this effect if it's fuse. It doesn't have to hit. So, you know. Yeah, I agree with that. This is a really good card to have in blue because, honestly, the effect is good enough that if you draw it and two reds and any other blue, you'll pitch the other blue, you'll fuse this, and you'll just do your attacks, right? So it's it's fine. And even if you put this in Arsenal and you have to give it go again by, say, revealing a lightning card, right? So, for example, in one game, I had a lightning card face down. I put a snapshot. Um, uh, next to it. Uh, sorry, I'm just trying to remember now. I think I had, was it a blink or something face down? No, I remember. I had a I had a snapshot face up. So I put a blue snapshot down, and just turned it face up. Um, so that Lexi could because I, I put it in because I had free resources. So it was face up, and then I put a lightning card in my second arsenal slot, which I had because snapshot was face up. Revealed the the lightning card to give snapshot go again fused the snapshot and then came in got basically a free um two strength attack um and had three triggers of altair then after that which was big you know it can be big this is just a great card to have all around and it blocks for three as well so i really like the blue snapshots in the deck here next up let's have some discussions about some non-elemental non-lightning cards this is Endless Arrow. This is a zero cost, four attack arrow. Once again, zero for four. It's it's amazing with Voltaire, right? Because even if you have it um, and a buff and anything else in your hand, you just can do some fun stuff. If it hits, put it in your hand. This is sweet. This is really, really sweet. When you can activate your bow multiple time and give your arrows go again, if your opponent's got nothing going on, oh, you can... Bam, hit ya. Comes back to my hand. Oh, look, I can activate my Voltaire again. I'll put it in here. Has go again. Bam, hit ya. Like, there's some really, really sweet stuff you can do with Endless Arrow. I think it's absolutely fantastic in this deck. Better than it's ever been. Really good. Really good. Uh, next up, we have another new card with Bolt and Shot. This card is amazing. So it's a zero cost card for attack, once again. Zero cost for four. It says, while Bolton Shot's attack is greater than its base attack, it has go again, and if it hits, reload. So we will literally always choose plus one from Voltaire with Bolton Shot, because it'll always have built-in go again. So this is actually a zero cost five attack, which is nuts, and if it hits, reload, which is not too bad. Sometimes we don't actually want to reload, because when you reload, it puts it into the arsenal um, face down, which isn't bad in and of itself. It's just... We mostly want to use our Voltaire for its effect, right? Either the plus one or the go again. And if we're putting our arrows face down into the arsenal, well, then we can't get that effect. There are some niche cases where you do just want to put a lightning card face down to give your next attack go again. Um, and those are quite fun. And obviously, you'll see his sideboard, he does have Blizzard. If you hit reload onto a Blizzard, you can just reveal the Blizzard to give them a Frostbite token. So that can be quite useful as well. Um, there can also be times when you're out of Voltaire charges, but you do have go again from Bolton Shot, and you do have an arrow in your hand. So, for example, like Endless Arrow, where basically Bolton Shot is giving you another free attack with Endless Arrow. So it's not uncommon to see that your last Voltaire is going to be a Bolton Shot coming in for five with an Endless Arrow in hand. 
and if it hits then you get a free endless arrow trigger which is great um it should be noted when you reload it doesn't have to be an arrow so you can put anything face down so if you wanted to put something else face down so you can you know use lexi's ability for nah, he's just copying me at this point well technically i'm copying him because i watched this video before but um i didn't remember that he said that so that's all right <laughs> for example, you can do that but yeah we're running three red bolton shots once again zero for five with go again really good and then the yellow bolton shots because it's still a zero for four because we're just always going to be using the the plus one there really really good next up we have one of my favorite ranger cards in the entire game remorseless one cost five attack arrow if it's put into your arsenal face up until end of turn it gains defense reactions can't be played from arsenal to remorseless's chain link so this is a card you want to play at the start of a really long chain where you you know activate your voltaire give this go again drop it into your arsenal and you're like hey now you can't play any defense reactions from the arsenal which is so good it's so good um it also says if it hits a hero until the end of their next turn whenever they play an action card they lose one life <laughs> obviously running a full set of the remorselesses such a good card like let's not even <laughs> it's just so powerful um does a lot of damage really hard to block against and it's just one of the cards you really want to see on those really big really big I mean, there's a reason it's now worth, like, what, $60? Because Crucible Unlimited went out of print. Which I'm not getting into, by the way. I'm avoiding that whole can of worms. But, um, yeah, there's a reason. Uh, three of a kind turns. Next up, we have an innocuous card. This is a card that I actually used um, in several of my other Ranger decks before because I really like it as a resource card. Headshot. So it's a one-cost, two-attack card, three defense. But it says if Headshot's put in your arsenal face up, which it will almost always be put in a face up because that's what we're doing with Voltaire, it gains plus two. So with Voltaire, if we do the plus one, this is actually a one cost plus five that pitches. Yeah, it's a really solid resource card that could also push if you've got other blues. For three, which is really good. Or a one cost plus four with go again. Either way you look at it, it's fantastic. So really, really good resource card and still can come in for five when you need to. So really like the headshots here. I think it's kind of a, I think headshots are almost a must. Like blue headshots are almost a must. It's also just like a really good anti-fatigue card because even if you pitch it early game, you're not actually going to be that sad to see it late game. You know, it's going to come up and you're going to be like, well, it's still pushing damage, so it's fine. Must in uh, any kind of deck like this. Now let's talk about some of our lightning cards. We have a decent suite of lightning attack actions. Uh, these are almost exclusively, and I mean exclusively, for resource and lightning because we need them to fuse all of our other stuff. So Heaven's Claws is a one cost three attack lightning card. That's it. It pitches for three, blocks for three. That three pitch, lightning, and block for three, that's what I really want to look for when I'm looking for these cards. I have attacked with it as well, but yeah, mostly it's for pitching and blocking. These slots in the deck, right? I need lightning cards that have good pitch and block well, which is why I'm not running any ball lightnings because ball lightnings do not block at all. And I really want cards that block because we have so many cards in the deck that don't block. So I the arrows are kind of like a trap because in reality you think, well, okay, but all the arrows block for three. But really because of the way a ranger is, if you start blocking with your arrows, you're actually losing the game because you're getting fatigued. So really it, it, you have to really evaluate how much the cards that aren't arrows block for more than how much the arrows block for because you can't look at your deck and be like well i've got 30 arrows they all block for three therefore i have 30 cards to block for three you will block for arrows in a push but if you start blocking with arrows against certain decks you're just going to get fatigued because they're going to get all the arrows out of your your hand and, and your deck so you're going to be screwed i think heaven's Claw is fantastic so i'm running a full full set of these similarly only one foil though which is atrocious that card needs to be triple foiled as soon as possible Lightning. This one as well, actually. All the lightning cards have amazing foiling. Surge. First of all, look at this art. So good. By Fu Thieu. This is a zero cost, two defense, two attack. If it's played from Arsenal, it gains go again. But this is the blue pitch version. So this is a card that you can, you know, you can kind of play this and have a go wide turn, right? You can kind of set it up, put in your Arsenal end of turn, or maybe even um, put it into your Arsenal from the reload from something like Bolton Shot. Remember, it's not an arrow, so you cannot put in your arsenal with Voltaire. But still still decent, right? It's not completely useless. But we really want it for the resources, it being a lightning card, and it still blocks. 
This is the card that I think some people would swap out for Ball Lightning, but I think Ball Lightning is actually pretty risky. Uh, I'm running two of the Lightning Starts, and that's just because Ball Lightning doesn't block at all. And you'll see... We oh, Ball Lightning is a trap. You heard it here first, folks. Uh, I actually agree with the, the Red Zone Rogue on this one. Uh, I feel like Ball Lightning is a trap. Though, you're blocking with a two, so are you really going to be blocking with a two all that often? Um, you know, two versus zero in terms of blocks... It is a difference, but is it really that much of a difference? I think Lightning Surge is going to end up in your hand as your one resource card as you block with other cards most of the time. And in that case, it could just as easily be Ball Lightning. But we'll see. We have a ton of cards that don't block at all, like the uh, Blinks. I think are running nine, nine incidents. So that's a lot of cards that don't block. Uh, yeah, he'll show you the lightning presses in a second, which don't block at all, and that is quite a lot of cards that don't block. But then equally, if you're blocking with this deck, you're losing, so go, 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 gotta go fast. Next up, we have more lightning cards. This one is Electrify. This card's fantastic. So there's a one-cost lightning action. We're skipping past Electrify. Electrify is clearly fantastic. We don't really need to worry about it. it deals extra damage. It draws you a card, it turns on your abilities, you confuse with it, and then put it into the arsenal. It gets boosted by Frazzle. Um, yeah. One of the tweaks that I, that I really want to look at going forward. Next up, we have one of my favorite cards, Pulse of Volt Haven. It's very simple. So Frazzles over the yellow Buzz Bolts? Possibly? Hmm. That's something I, I'm considering. I'm okay, sure Frazzle that, versus Buzzball. I just jumped I, really wanna... I jumped back to see what tweaks he was talking about. Frazzle versus Buzzball, I think both are very good um look at going forward next up we have one of my favorite cards pulse of volt haven it's very simple zero cost legendary which means you can only have one of them in your deck it's a ice and lightning instant or lightning and ice instant if i read it properly uh your next lightning ice or elemental attack gains plus four so this does not work on any of our generic ranger cards but still zero cost plus four you should also note even though it's an instant it says your next attack so you can't use this during the reaction phase to pump up the card you're attacking with because it's already attacking. So you got to keep that in mind. But this is just being on ice and lightning is fantastic and zero for plus four is also fantastic. The legendary, like I said, means you can only have one in your deck. Um, one of the reasons I love this card so much in this deck is because I include a cheeky one of Ice Storm. Okay, so let me talk about Ice Storm. I mean, Ice Storm is the trap, right? And there's only one, basically in this deck, if you draw the Pulse of Vault Haven and the Ice Storm together, then you confuse Ice Storm, otherwise you can't. It's a bit of a, like, meme card, but it is a zero for plus three, which is not terrible. Um, you know, meh. Storm. Talk about Ice Storm and Vault Haven. This is my high roll. This is my high roll. I will say, if you're having trouble finishing a game, having pitched an Ice Storm and a Pulse of Vault Haven to the bottom of the deck, you could, in fact, set yourself up for a very big turn. Part of the deck. And I actually love this kind of stuff. This is like some... You have to do both. Well, you still got... Deals damage to a hero. Because it says... Yeah, we're not going to talk about this one too much. We're just going to skip past it, because Ice Storm is clearly a trap. Um, if you confuse it, it's great, but he's clearly running it just because he might draw lucky. Um... Which I think is, you know, it's not consistency in deck building, which I don't like. But equally, you know, if you pitch right and you prepare yourself, you could probably get ahead with that. Um, I think it's cheeky, and I like it. I like it a lot. Um, and I like people including cheeky cards, so I like the attitude. But I don't, I just don't think I would build the deck around that. Next up, and finally, we have Lightning Press. This is a zero cost instant. Once again, we have a lot of instants in this deck. I think we actually have ten. I forgot about Pulse of Bolt Haven being an instant. Uh, this is the red pitch version. Target attack action card with cost one or less gains plus three. That's all of them. All of them cost one or less. Um, that's it. So we're running the reds and we are running the yellows. What's really cool about the yellows, by the way, is pumping up five attack cards. Because when you pump up a five attack card with this, it makes it into seven. And a lot of decks will have be running three block cards. So that forces them to block with three cards in their hand because two cards will be blocking for six. So attacking for seven is a really, really good breakpoint, which is why I like the plus twos in this deck quite a bit. So yeah, I really like the lightning presses. Also the lightning cards. You know, we, we need a good critical mass of lightning cards in the deck so we can get all the fusion. And they're an instant, so you can attack with a card, fuse with the lightning press, and then play the lightning press, which you can't do with something like Pulse of Vault Haven. That's one of the key things about running any of the new heroes is you need a good mass 
of lightning cards, right? And I believe this deck we're running around 20 something. I would also highly recommend not 20 is a good number. Like 25 is almost guaranteed to get a lightning card in every hand, but if you start talking about 20, not cutting any of the lightning cards, maybe even adding some lightning cards, it might be a little too too little right now. So, that's something I'm very, you know, conscious about going into this testing season. Do I have enough lightning cards in the deck to fuse? So far, yeah, it's pretty good, especially with all of the the card draw and all the craziness that we have. So, keep that in mind. And also keep in mind that there's a lot of cards that don't block, right? We have the six lightning presses, Pulse of Bolt Haven for seven, and then the three blocks. A lot, yeah, so it's a lot of cards that, that don't block. It doesn't block well. It's a kind of all aggro deck, which is why getting block on some of these cards and not running the, um, the ball lightnings is, is very important in my opinion. But so I disagree with that, you know, as an aggro Katsu player. I think if your goal is not to block, then just don't block, right? You know, don't don't run the hedge bet two strength crap block card um, that is not as good as the zero block card uh, that you need to keep your aggro up. Commit to the aggro and trust the aggro to get you through the other side, right? And accept that if you get to a point where you're blocking, you are going to be a bit screwed, but it's okay if you get enough aggro on the table that you can push through. So I think it might be worth him trying this deck with, say, two blue, blue, red and blue ball lightnings and just seeing how it feels. Um, and he may find himself doing more damage. Okay, so that, that's the main deck, right? That's kind of like our main strategy, just going to town, especially, oh, especially with the three of the kinds. I love it. So what about the sideboard? So the main argument against running stuff like ball lightning is that if you three of a kind into it, it's going to be in your hand and you can't attack with it, which is why it's arguably better to run less lightning cards that aren't already going to be in your arsenal from the turn before. So our sideboard options are as thus. Basically some gold hall options with uh, Seek and Destroy. So it's a zero cost plus three for an arrow. If it hits at the beginning of their next end phase, they discard all cards from a hand and destroy reaction. So you can just push through their initial blocks. Seek and Destroy is great. Just bust something pretty huge. And if they're not running any high, a decent, decent substitute for Electrify. Um, but it's a very tricky substitute because Electrify has the bonus of being a lightning card, whereas Flash Freeze does not. Um, I think Flash Freeze has bigger... Why am I trying to substitute Electrify? I don't really understand. Potential, but it's, it's tricky. So Flash Freeze is a one cost elemental action blocks for two. Uh, it says ice and or lightning so we will probably not be doing the ice but the ice one um when you attack if you fuse with ice uh, whenever you attack this turn it gains dominate unless the defending hero pays two yeah like i said we're not really going to be doing that all that much what i really like about this is the second part if flash freeze was fused with a lightning card attacks you control this turn gained if it hits a hero it deals three damage to them like an extra three damage to them so what i like about that is it, it kind of applies that electrify effect to all of your attacks so this is a card that you could get and have an absurd turn on where you are going like going to town with your three of a kinds, drawing a bunch of cards, firing them all off, doing a whole bunch of attacks. And every single time one of them hits, Flash Freeze pops and deals an extra. Th but only if the Flash Threes was in the arsenal at the start of your turn and you fused it. It's a bit of a tricky one. Or, or I guess if it was in your hand and you played it before the three of a kind. I'm not saying Flash Threes is wrong, but... Electrified does replace itself, which is why it's more powerful. Three damage to them. So that's kind of why I have it in here. I'm not sure how good it is, but I really think the potential's there. So I think it could be there for a, a really, if you really, really want to go as aggro as possible. On the flip side, we have Feign Death, which is a really, really good defensive card, especially against certain decks. Any deck that goes really wide or like an OTK style Viscerai deck, I think Feign Death is pretty good not only does it pitch for two but it says play feign death only if you've been dealt damage this turn the next time you'd be dealt damage this turn prevent it so what you do is on like an otk viscerai deck they're popping off you take a little bit of arcane damage and then they come in with a nine attack like ninth blade of the blood oath you can feign death the ninth blade of the blood oath and prevent yeah it's pretty good it's also good versus prism where if they come in with one herald and you're like, okay, cool, I take one, one I, I block, I take one or two damage. 
Then they come in with the Herald of Erudition. You can feign death, prevent all the damage. It doesn't hit. They don't draw cards. Nine damage. And if they're pumping that up with like a slogism or something, you know, it's coming in for 15. Feign death. I don't know who's using slogism anymore. I don't think anyone uses slogism anymore. <laughs> the ODK Viscera is not as popular as people think it is. People are on much more mid-range aggressive builds, especially with all of the new tools that came in with the creepers and stuff like that. You know, ODK Viscera isn't as popular anymore. Yeah. It's soul crushing. It's absolutely soul crushing. So I, I really like Feign Death kind of in the sideboard here. I think uh, I think it'll be important going forward, not just against Viscera, but maybe against like Agro Katsu. You know, they're popping off, coming in with like a uh, it's not great versus Agro Katsu. They'll just be like, okay, cool, that one doesn't hit. Just do another one. Six attack, ninja kick, you can feign death it. One card, blocking six. Pretty good. Well, that is good, but, you know, okay, cool. You had to pitch for that as well, so. Um, next up, this one I'm not sure about, but you would kind of... This is a better threat against Agro Katsu. Much, much better, because he won't have two spare resources. I'm going to put it in against the same kind of decks. Uh, is Blizzard. So Blizzard is a zero cost blue pitch card. It's an ice instant. It says target attack loses. I love doing this against uh, Prism. Yeah. <laughs> oh, do you have spare resources for your, your shields? Okay, cool. And can't gain. Step, step, step. Go again until the attacking hero, or unless the attacking hero pays two. So this is really good again. You probably take out the yellow lightning presses for this, right? Just because they don't block. Yeah. It's kind of like, you know, ninja. Or blink. Mm. Ninjas, any other go wide decks where their resources are very, very hampered. Even kind of against this deck, honestly, where your resources are very, very hampered, you can't really afford to pay that too, and it just kind of shuts down their turn. So I'm running three of these. Once again, not sure how good they are, but I think they're worth testing. And then that's it for the deck. I do have two more ice storms. No, they're a trap. You already won one card that confused them. Storms, just just in case. I, I just non cold foil version of these. Honestly, just, you know, a little aside, I want to eventually get the cheaper versions of all of these because there's no way in hell I'm bringing my, my cold foil below what you think of it. I'm definitely going to be on the later calling events this year. Ring the bell. <laughs> this is me ringing the bell. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, okay, so next to the video, I've got two games recorded. This is going to be a longer video. So we're going into two games um, with this Lexi deck, one into Dash and one into Rider. It's going to be epic. I'm really going to enjoy it. Uh, my initial takes this deck was good. It caught my eye. It has all of the bits that I wanted from a Lightning Lexi. It has Go Again. It has good sources of damage. It has three of a kinds. It has big turns. So I said, this guy sounds like he's got a good notion. Sounds like he knows what he's talking about. I'm going to give it a shot. Spoilers. Tried out the deck. I think this is a really good starting build for Lightning Lexi. I think there are some places where it could be tuned, which we can talk about later on. But my initial takeaway is very good. So, of course, gameplay coming up next. And we'll jump into that in a second. Uh, but yeah, thumbs up. This is a great video. Unlike, I haven't seen you know, some of the videos I've seen out there. Some of the deck techs I've seen I haven't really know, known what they're doing or have put in bad cards. I don't think this one has any bad cards. It has some interesting choices. It has some interesting options. It has some things that could be tweaked. But I think this is actually a really good starter deck. So that's going to be exciting. Um, can't wait to move on to some gameplay, which we'll do now. So, um, continuing sort of this episode, I guess we're going to do some gameplay here. I'm currently just working on the sideboard, of course, uh, for this game. I'm deciding to include some Seek and Destroys just because I am playing into a dash. And I feel like this dash may want to keep her arsenal, keep some prep um, set up. Especially if, you know, for example, they have two items in their hand. Um, having a Seek and Destroy might just be the solution to um stopping that that going through um so we're just going to kind of uh see how that plays out now um obviously voltaire the equipment choice i think is fairly straightforward um let's just see if we can't skip ahead a little bit until the actual game starts uh so i think i go first um i'm not sure yet whether going first is the right idea or not um but you know, I'm willing to sort of give it give it a shot. So good opening hand. Um 
you'll see obviously the challenges that I can't play the pulse and fuse and play both arrows. I don't have the resources. Um Oh, sorry, I'm, I'm going second here. I thought I was going first. Um, but because I don't have the resources to do all those things, you know, that pulse is likely to get arsenaled um, just because it will let me get both triggers off Lexi next turn. Um, and obviously I don't want to really waste two damage. He plays an enchanting melody, which is a bit of an odd choice. Um, I can understand why you'd play it. Definitely buys you time to set up. Definitely soaks some damage. Um, so just cognizant of the fact that I don't have enough resources, I decided to load a frazzle at the end of that turn um, to give me the option of putting an arrow into... Um, into the arsenal with um, with Voltaire and giving it a go again and still shooting the Frazzle, which I think was kind of important. Um, and of course, now I have drawn the snapshot, so actually I can potentially play, um, if not all of these, at least some of these. Um, if I had a tunic counter, this would be a full hand kind of turn. Um, as it isn't, um, I'm probably going to end up arsenaling that Pulse of Vault Haven. And just playing two arrows um, from my hand um, to get the effect that I want. Light it up also great at this stage of the game. It um, obviously the amount of damage it deals it turns that off um, from your opponent's equipment. So if it deals four or more damage, it will turn off all of my opponent's equipment, which is actually pretty huge. Um, you want to turn off Techno Foundry Hearts. Um, generally stop people having options there. So we go with a snapshot. Um, letting me use my bow an additional time, so that costs one resource. Using with this Pulse of Vault Haven, which is fine. And obviously this kind of demands a block, though Snapshot isn't really, it doesn't really demand a block, does it? It's just zero for four. Um, but it is at least, you know, a, a solid option when it comes to, um, you know, I can play that and I can play Light It Up, for example. Um, whereas uh, I wouldn't be able to necessarily do that in another environment. So that gets a sync below um, rather than the Enchanting Melody. At this point, I really do just want that Enchanting Melody. Um, yellow, I really do have to eat it. So I will send out the Light It Up into the... Um, into the attack with the pulse of vault haven there and he kind of has a choice as to whether he blocks um he does have i think three cards in his hand two cards in his hand at this point you can see i've kind of covered up his hand portion which was a little bit of a mistake i tend to like to cover my opponent's um username um i just seem to accidentally covered his hand up as well so that's just a little bit of an er editing error um but he does have obviously three cards left in his hand at this stage um having you sink below on one of them so he could block for more um but you'll see he kind of wants to save his enchanting melody so he's just blocking for five with that um or is he gonna let his enchanting melody eat the damage yeah so at that point he lets his enchanting melody eat the damage which i think is fairly solid because there's obviously no way to guarantee that he'll be able to use it again next turn um, so I think that's just kind of that's kind of useful. Um, and now you see I've got another really good aggro hand, so I can reveal the pulse of Vault Haven. Um, give Frazzle go again, and play the pulse of Vault Haven with Frazzle, fuse with the lightning press, and then if I want to, I can Frazzle again, and do an endless arrow as well. And then if I wanted to, I could Bullseye Braces into another Endless Arrow, assuming the first one hit. Or Arsenal the Endless Arrow for next turn. 
So there's lots and lots of options here, um, which of course start off just by taking a bit of damage because, you know, I'm playing aggro. When I'm playing aggro, I just take damage from the Raging Onslaught. That's fine. So one Frostbite token for my opponent. Go again for me. And in comes a Frazzle. The nine with go again. And I fuse with this Lightning Press red. Delightful. Now at this point I have a I have a choice. I haven't used Voltaire at all. So if he overblocks this, I could potentially um use Endless Arrow twice. So you know and, and go for the Frazzle triggers. Um because that would only be two um two uh resources. Or I can play the Frazzle and do something with my Endless Arrow by pitching the Lightning Press, um, which would be probably subpar in my mind. I prefer to Arsenal that Lightning Press just to see if I need Go Again next turn. Because remember, Go Again in Lexi isn't just Go Again. If you flip a Lightning card, it's also plus one. So it's important to understand that by giving Go Again through the Lightning ability, you actually do get plus one on your Arrow because you don't have to give it Go Again with Voltaire. And that also, and it also allows you to clear out your arsenal in a more productive way if you have had to arsenal an arrow. So it's hard to under, it's hard to under sort of state the importance of getting that lightning base to go again, even if you feel like, you know, oh well, I already have go again from Voltaire, so I don't need that. Um, so in this option, because he fully unblocked the um, frazzle with an unmovable, I'm happy coming in with the endless arrow. Which, of course, if it deals damage, will deal an extra one damage. So he takes five, Endless Arrow comes back. Um, and then I have a choice. So I can play Frazzle and pitch the Endless Arrow and potentially come in for five plus or six plus two damage. Or I can pitch, play, pit, play the Endless Arrow again um, just for plus one and come in for five. I think I go for the Frazzle just because it is a little bit more damage and I've already got two cards out of his hand. So the potential is I can push a bit more damage here. And obviously I can fuse it. Now I don't know necessarily that this was the right decision. I feel like I already had the card I needed from his hand. And I could have arsenal the Frazzle and been fine next turn. Because um, I could have flipped it with Lexi. Um, which I didn't really necessarily need to do. I don't, I don't mind arsenaling the Lightning Press here. Because I dealt... I think 10, 9 damage that turn. So everything was fine. But I feel like if I had just gone in with the Endless Arrow again, I could have potentially um, arsenaled the Frazzle, played the Lightning Press on the Endless Arrow. And then I would have had an Endless Arrow in my hand, which isn't ideal because I don't really want to hold on to those. But it would have been useful. Um, so we'll see. We'll see. Now we'll see on my next turn, I have the delightful three of a kind. Um, plenty of arrows to play and a lightning press in Arsenal. Um, it would be ideal to play three of a kind if I had another card in Arsenal. Uh, but as it is, I unfortunately um, just have this lightning press there. It is fine because, I mean, lightning press in sealed or limited would get stuck in your Arsenal. But in CC, you, of course, do get the beautiful option of um, the... Uh, the go again. Now here I do make a slight mistake, and that mistake is that I pitch my lightning card, which is a blue, um, to draw into some arrows, um, rather than um, keeping the blink available and maybe getting rid of my yellow arrow, which I could have done. Um, and then I would have drawn um, these extra lightning cards, but I would have had something to fuse them, and I didn't have a fusion. So that's just something to be aware of. I think pitching away by fusion was definitely a mistake. Um, I should have kept it Pitch the yellow, see what I drew, and then, of course, giving myself more options um, as to what I'm going to do next. Because um, as it is, I mean, I can only shoot two arrows at the moment unless I reload um, with the bullseye braces, which I don't want to use just yet. I like using bullseye braces to push through lethal, um, but I think in this game I probably use them badly as well. I have a feeling I use them on this turn, um, even though I, you know, I didn't really want to.
So at this point, I'm coming in with a yellow arrow, which I didn't really need to do. I really, really, really should have just, um, you know, gone in with uh, Remorseless, with Go Again, or even a Dazzling Crescendo into Remorseless, and played the Ice Storm as well. But I think I had in my head, this is before I learned the deck too well, that I could fuse the Ice Storm. But actually, I have already played this this deck. Um, I've already played the only card that can fuse Ice Storm in this deck. And this is only a 1x copy of Ice Storm. So I could definitely have just played out the Ice Storm and, you know, not needed to uh, hold it in hand. Um, however, you will see now I'm pitching Reds to play Remorseless. Um, and then coming in with Remorseless for 6, which is not terrible. Um, you know, this hasn't been a terrible use of resources, but for me, you know, any hand like this is not a good three of a kind turn. If you're only getting two attacks off, it can always be better. Um, but that's all right. So, Remorseless isn't going to affect him for the Arsenal part. However, you know, and the card playing doesn't super affect Dash either. So I could have sideboarded it out, but it is a red one for five, which does make it quite a strong, strong card to play. So he blocked with an immovable eye lightning press to clear it out and also just because I wanted my remorseless to hit to potentially prevent him playing, um, you know, actions and things like that. I think I very much for these games, I do have to switch to a top down overview. My friend has suggested I set up a separate stream um, with the top down overview. The only problem with that is that I do not have um, a second computer for this. Um, so I do very much need, um, you know, I'd have to make another TTS account somehow and get a dual version of it running, which I don't really think is that practical. Um, but, you know, maybe at some point in the future I'll have a separate streaming PC. I am planning on replacing this PC that I currently have in probably two years' time or something. I'm waiting for the next generational shift at Intel and... Um, on graphics cards and then i may buy the current generation once the prices have dropped a little bit um i'm also not paying like through the nose for a 390 or whatever it is on um on the reseller market you know i know they were still in short supply um probably in quite a few places so i'm, I'm fairly chilled and um, the only game at the moment i really want to play that is like super super graphic out is new world and i do want new world in max graphics but i can wait for that um, so we see Bolton Shot coming in, um, plus one from Voltaire, another plus one from Voltaire. Um, so I get that secondary effect on both of the arrows um, with the reload and the um, and the hit. Um, we've seen the first one uh, fully blocked out for four, or for, sorry, for five. And now we're going to see what the second one does. Um, he takes the damage, I reload and electrify, but I don't do anything with it because I want it in my arsenal. I don't know why I put this upside down. Light and fancy. I have electrified an ice storm in arsenal. I think at this point I'm trying to find that that ice card that isn't in the deck. Um, <laughs> which I think is very funny because um, this was my first game of this deck. I think I was trying to find the ice card um, for the fusion. Um, at some point, I do just give up and play it. But the thing to remember is that Ice Storm isn't really taking up a spot in my arsenal at the moment because I, I need to draw the arrows to make this work. And obviously, it's not. So, you know, I'm kind of taking a beating but giving back a beating, and that's okay. Um, so I take six here just because... I don't really see this deck as a blocking deck, um, as arrogant as that sounds, but I feel like if there's a suitably big on-hit effect, then yeah, you might end up blocking. Um, but I think otherwise, you just kind of have to go with it. And you'll see here that I just took 10 damage because I didn't block a Raging Onslaught, and I got Pummel. Now, I'm not really sure why this dash is running Pummel, but, you know, clearly they are. So I play the Electrify Blue, I pitch, I draw a card. I've pitched an arrow here, which I'm not super keen on. And I've drawn into a blue Heaven's Claw, which again, not super keen on either. 
but that is okay um because i do obviously have the resources to do two attacks with what i have available um so you know there are options available there um that are going to enable me to play the way i want to play um So Data and Crescendo with Fusion and plus one, which is coming in for five. It's not so bad. It's a bit tricky to block. It might get two cards from hand if he doesn't want to take an extra damage from Electrify. Um, I can push through the Electrify damage, and if it was a red, I probably would with the Lightning Press. But as it is, um, I suspect most of you know I'm probably going to be playing my last resource to just play a Heaven's Claw here, um, just for an extra three points of damage push um, to keep me sort of in the tempo of the race. Um... And then arsenal this lightning press to get go again next turn and see how we do. interesting to see yesterday of course the calling results we had bravo we had dash we had katsu we had briar um no lexi unfortunately as far as i remember um let's see i'll, I'll just have it i'll remind myself and make sure there was no lexi before i feel like i'm lying to you all um events deck lists Oh no, I tell a lie, there was a Lexi deck in the top eight yesterday. Um, what was the Lexi deck? Can we have a look? It was actually very similar to this deck. It ran Exude Confidence, that's quite interesting. Heaven's Claw Red, very interesting. Uh, Lightning Press, two Pole to Vault Haven, so he was definitely cheating. Uh, no, don't take that seriously, he was not cheating. <laughs> he was running Pulse of Vault Haven. It's perfectly fine. Um actually a very very similar list to this so you can kind of take a bit of comfort from that i guess um that this deck is clearly being tested a little bit if he's making the top eight of a calling pro quest um with something similar i think that's quite quite exciting um i do wonder perhaps if he was inspired by this deck um he is running dazzling crescendo blue which i'm not sure i agree with but i guess the go again the free is almost interesting um yeah, so that's quite fun. He's running Heart of Ice as well, just to deal with Briar, I guess. So this turn is kind of, like, meh, right? I mean... Kind of just playing some cards to threaten some damage. Um, was that a misplay there? Was that not in my hand? It was in my hand. Oh. Oh, oh, <laughs> we have caught an error, have we? I played Electrify Red and I drew a card. Ooh. Oh, that's not good. What did I put it back? One second. I think I put it back. Yeah, good. Let's just make sure. I'm fairly sure I put this back during the game I was playing, but if I've accidentally drawn a card, then... Uh, what's been going on there? Oh, maybe the card just went accidentally back on the top of my deck. Maybe that's what happened. Yeah. Either way, this is a misplayed turn. I should have just arsenaled the Tome of Fiendal. Played out the Lightning um, Surge. Um, and then just gone to the next turn and seen what happens. Um... You know, I, I mean, I like I like the forcing him to block um, instead of keep giving him a full card hand. But I feel like Lightning Surge Blue, blue is just a bit too cute. Um, then again, it does push damage. I will say that this one does push damage. Um, if I 
you know, if he blocks for three and then I lightning press, which is currently what he's talking about, because he's gotten quite low on life. Um, he's not he's not on lethal here, but he's very much trying to decide if I lightning press this, what damage is that going to go into, you know? So he blocks for six, which is fine with me because I've got a very, very high life lead at this point. Decisions, decisions, decisions. Oh, I remember what was going on at this point. So at this point in the game, my opponent was trying to decide whether to block for eight or not. And I was explaining to my opponent that because he's already seen two red lightning presses, I actually physically can't get plus six um, with the cards in the game. That's what was going on here. So I, I explained to him that if I have two yellow lightning presses, I can get plus four. If I have a Lightning Press and a Razor Reflex, I can't play both of them. And there are no other cards in the game um, that will buff at instant speed um, or is at reaction speed um, a, z a zero or one cost Lightning Attack to get that bonus. So Lightning Press obviously will work um, for plus two. But, the, you know, I'd need two red Lightning Presses, which he knew I didn't have by checking my graveyard. And he was a bit confused by that. He's like, well, where's, where?" you know... Uh, am I suddenly going to die here? And it's like, you're not, because those those cards actually don't exist. So at this point, I'm on the cusp of winning, for sure. Uh, but this hand isn't actually a great hand for getting me across the finish line. So really what I'm doing, I'm just going to take some damage. Um, he plays a come to fight to keep the melody out, which I'm not sure is really a very good use of the card that's okay um but i take another two damage from the pistols that's fine on my turn <laughs> i really want to get set up for the kill so my actual you know, my actual goal i'm just going to play three of a kind draw three cards and it would be so much better if i had the tunic counter because i'm going to turn that one into a tome of fiendal and i'm going to gain seven life up to 22 and this is a sneaky little combo that I very much like. Not in the winning deck at not in the, in the winning deck in the sixth place deck at um, at uh, the calling, but that is probably because it's a very cute combo. Like it's not it's strong. You gain seven life back, and you can end your turn on seven with seven cards. So you can get some really powerful combos going on the next turn as well as a block. But of course, the risk to all of this is if you you know. You, you just do nothing that turn, right? Because you you have no way to get go again on the Tome of Fiendal, unless, of course, you want to run Mage Master's Boots, which, to be fair, if, if, if one of the goals you have in the game is to fire that combo at least once, may not actually be a bad choice. So you could run instead of... Because actually, I haven't found Snapdragons that great in um in lexi because you are really constrained by the not by the um not by the go again you're constrained by the bow again um sorry a little bit of a pun the bow again um because just like in other ranger classes really without that bow to um basically load your weapons you are essentially stuck i mean you, you don't really have any options you can't um get go again you can't you know unless you're running a significant amount of reload you can't get go again so you're just sort of sitting there looking at your hand being like well these are great arrows if i could get them to work but i can't so you know i'm just looking at them in my hand so then we go in with the buzz bolts because we can so that's voltaire trigger one um pitch the blink 
fuse with the lightning press. And he's got two enchanting melody red. So really what I'm doing here is just trying to bait them out um, and see if I can't push through um, at least one damage with the Bolton shot to break up the enchanted melodies um, and give myself some options. Because um, remember, the enchanting melody will trigger when you next take damage and it will prevent four of that damage. But then it will go. So even if I get one or two damage through on the attack, it'll still break the enchanting melody, which all I really want from this particular attack is just to break through enough on the defense that I can actually get the enchanting melodies gone. So we see here, this is coming in for seven. He blocks for nine. I say, okay, do I want to break an enchanting melody here? If I do, I can play the red um red uh lightning press and boost my attack to 10 and that will deal one damage to the enchanting melody and therefore get, let me get rid of it and that's what i decide to do so that's my goal that gets me a enchanting melody and then i can go in with another attack and see if i can't get another enchanting melody um off there Yeah, and I'm tempted to use the bullseye braces here to load the Bolton shot. I think that would be quite a good idea, um, giving me another way to get go again without, you know, go again um, without the bow, um, which I think is quite good. Instead, I come in with the dazzling crescendo, and I wonder about this one. Because if I had played the Bolton shot, I would have had automatic go again when it went through, assuming I could deal at least one damage, which with a lightning press in my hand, I probably could. I think the main reason I went with this is I didn't want to play the lightning press just yet, and I was planning on using my bullseye braces anyway. Um, because the ideal here, I guess, is I use bullseye braces, Bolton shot, into another buzz shot or an endless arrow, and really just get some damage across. Um, so Dajic Crescendo gets, eats that, um, and of course hits for one, because it has plus one. And Bullseye's Brace is in the Bolton shot, and come in for five. I think this is probably GG or very close to GG. Um, I think I get the last of his equipment. Yeah, because he pitches and then, yeah, it gives me his iron hides. So I get his equipment and then I can't really do anything else. <laughs> Which is classic, really, for, for Lexi. It's like, well, you blocked, so uh, GG. And there we go. Those are put away. I have a card in my arsenal. We're all good. Draw two cards. Those cards are arrows, so life is golden. He pings me once with a pistol. Doesn't have any cards left. I give myself go again so that I can do funky stuff. And then I'm in a bit of an awkward position, though, because I can't... If I pitch the lightning surge, I can't fuse either of those arrows, both of which I want to fuse. Um, so maybe the best turn here would just be, you know, snapshot into buzz bolt or snapshot into endless arrow. But I really feel like the fusion is going to power this turn. Um, so I prefer. So I think I decided on snapshot into endless arrow. If endless arrow hits, well, I fuse the snapshot. So I can actually use the bow a third time. And that gives me potential for three attacks um, on the lightning surge, which is quite good. So, yeah, pitch that, come in with the snapshot, one resource floating. And the potential for two endless arrows then. Or is it actually only one? No, it's two. It's two. I can get two off with this. Um... Because I can always pitch the blue to play another endless arrow. 
I do feel like this game became hard to close out um, once the player knew they were losing. It became kind of difficult to push the game over the top. Um, and we'll see that happen in the next game as well, because um, I played against Reinar after this, a very good Reinar player. Um, and he, again, when he when he was losing, um, he, he decided to, he changed strategies because he was taking too much damage and decided his best strategy, well... He was kind of on this strategy the entire time, right? Because he, he knew that it, I only had a certain number of red arrows in my deck. He was very much trying to push me towards um, fatigue, but he went much, much harder into fatigue when he got down to that low life. And we'll see that in the next game where he, he basically just, when he got low, he just started blocking everything. And then I had to push through over 12 damage a turn across two attacks or three attacks, hopefully, just to sort of take that, damage points off him and it became very difficult and then of course all he had to do to win that was just smack with the club smack with the club i always needed five card hands to try and push through his defense and he could just smack me with his club um one of the reasons i believe reinar is probably one if not the best one of the best meta decks um in this format and don't let you know yourself be confused by the results of the calling um i do know what i'm talking about uh reinar is very very good you saw two dashes in the top cut of the um, final, and Reinar isn't a slam dunk versus dash, uh, but of course, if he rolls well on Arg Smash, then it can be very effective. Um, and of course, we have to consider the role of Reinar versus Prism as well, and of course, Levia too. Let's not forget Levia. Levia is very good. Um, there are basically many heroes that um, provide much needed um, fuel for the fire, shall we say. Um, so on this hand with two red Bolton shots and a lighted up, I am looking to Bolton shot twice, um, as well as that two cost um, go again in my arsenal. So I should actually be able to attack three times this turn, um, which will be pretty impactful. Um, yeah, kind of a bit of a sequencing thing here because I don't need to give Bolton shot go again, uh, but I don't really want to attack with... Um, anything else anyway so giving it go again is fine it comes in with plus one from voltaire so has go again coming in for five kind of demanding a two block um i potentially could have used the electrify with the tunic counter and then um just used lighted up to load the two bolton shots that probably would have been better because then i'm coming in for three sources of damage 5, 5, and 12, and if either of them hit, I would get an extra 3 damage, which would be pretty huge. So that might have been the better play here. But of course, you know, hindsight is twenty twenty, and it's a lot easier to say that when I'm reviewing these games than it is when I'm, um, you know, playing them at the time. So he blocks the first attack for um, 6, I think. Blocks the second attack for 3 and then I come in with a Bolton shot for five. I oh, know I came in with a lighted up for five. How did I do that? Oh, it's a yellow Bolton shot. That's why. Okay, that makes more sense. So I come up with a lighted up for five. Just because, you know, if he doesn't fully block it, which he's only got three cards in hand, no card in Arsenal, so he probably can't fully block it um and if it hits it'll deal an extra two damage which would be quite nice um but i potentially could have broken the chain no i couldn't have played electrify here that's fine um he blocks for three and takes four goes down to one very grindy to finish off but then sometimes it can just be grindy to finish off these games um
So Electrify from Arsenal, perfectly happy with that. Come in with the arrows, arrows, arrows. You know, if I play a snapshot and fuse, then I can use the bow three times, um, which I want to do. Um, I wish I had another resource, but then I guess I can always pitch the Heaven's Light to play the Remorseless with zero problems there. Um, but actually, I think, yeah, so I start with the Buzz Bolt here for sure. I don't start with the Snapshot. Uh, no, start with the Buzz Bolt. <laughs> Come on. I guess my logic is that if I start with the Buzz Bolt, I can't fuse the Snapshot, whereas if I start with the Snapshot, I can at least fuse that and then play the Buzz Bolt on the Remorseless. Um, I would have needed the Tunic Counter to have be able to play the Buzz Bolt first. Looking back, that seems to be my logic here. Is that just one resource short of playing the Buzz Bolt before the Snapshot? Um, because I wouldn't be able to fuse the Snapshot if I played it sec if I played it second, which means I wouldn't be able to get the positive effect of the um, of the um, fusion, which would let me use the weapon again three times. And I really need to do three attacks here just to finish out the game, because I'm going to get two cards on the first block. Uh, two cards on the second block, and then, as expected, two cards. Well, he's out of cards for the third block, so I kind of win in that way. Yeah, so come in for five without fusing. Two resources floating. And then finish off with a remorseless for six. Not so bad, is it? Uh, not so bad at all. And there we go. Crossing the finish line with three arrows for the win. Um, not really much my opponent can do at that point. Just GG. Um, so I guess the takeaways here really, I mean, ooh, that's not supposed to happen. One second. Um, the takeaways here really, I guess, are... You know, the deck is very good. I think it does have a problem closing games out. Um, but I would genuinely say, you know, whoever Red Zone Work has worked with or done it himself, this is a very good deck. And you'll see it is quite close. If we bring it up here, I guess we can we can do that. Uh, bring it up for you. If we look at the um, the calling deck, um, it is actually very close to the deck that recently placed top six in this calling. Um, Henry Martinez, uh, you know, this is running Heart of Ice for flexibility. It's running Perch Grapplers because they block assumedly and you'll see i didn't really feel the need to use snapdragons in that last game um bolton shots it's running c and c i guess there's some differences there but the arrow choices are often quite similar endless arrow frazzle uh, heaven's claw red is interesting as well as the blue um lightning press remorseless sleep darts quite interesting as well snatch is quite interesting um you know there's definitely some some interesting choices but at the core these are very similar decks um, so I think Red Zone Rogue has definitely designed quite a good deck here. Um, I would rate it quite highly um, just after playing a few games with it. Um, this one and, of course, a few off-camera as well. Um, so I would say if you're looking for a good Lexi starter deck, um, this is a good place to be in. Um, so, I mean, I guess good work to Red Zone Rogue and, of course, whoever he worked with this deck on or if he made it himself. Um, I feel like this is a really good starting place for Lightning Lexi and I feel like a lot of people could take a lot from this. Um, of course, just for my own sake, you know, this is a new type of content that I'm thinking about trying. If you've listened this far and you liked it, do let me know if this is the sort of content you want to do. There are so many content creators and so many decks being put out there that I thought actually the addition of sort of a level of meta content where someone sits down and reviews some of them for you um, might be quite interesting. Um, the caveat, of course, is that this is quite more of an intensive process than you know just recording a half an hour talking video so if this is the sort of thing you really liked you know do let me know and we can see if we can do more of it if you have a content creators deck you'd like me to review if you have a deck list you'd like me to review um ideally it's not coming to me just with your you know oh my god i'm, I'm t totally sure this works um i'm not here for sort of off the wall ideas but if you think you've seen something um that's like going to 
impact the meta massively or, or break the meta um you know and you want me to have a look at it do feel free to send it my way um i do like the idea of doing this sort of second level of meta deck review analysis of deck techs um because i think there's just gonna, we're getting to a point where there's going to be a lot of flesh and blood content out there a lot of deck lists being put out there especially during national season and reviewing things like how well the deck works is it is it going very well is an interesting way to do it the main thing of course is i want to make sure that i'm being constructive i'm adding to videos rather than just taking away from them like i don't want to be a i don't want to be critical of someone's work to build a deck not put any reps into it myself and then call it like with my levia deck i feel like i went possibly a bit too far on the critical side of things when i was reviewing the Wraith times deck but equally i then followed it up with a really positive levia deck um you know which i think has actually got a lot of legs so i think there's you know i'm not necessarily going to be super positive about every single deck tech video that i review um some of them i just i will just come out and say i don't think they're based on sound principles or i don't think the deck is working but i will try and find a deck for that hero that i do think is working and contribute positively in that way so i just wanted to wrap it up like that obviously if you like this content do let me know do like and subscribe to the video if you're still listening after an hour and a half you definitely at least owe me a like if not a subscribe and of course you know if you really like my video um there is of course a link to my ko-fi page or coffee page um which is basically patreon but british so i don't have to um worry about taxes as much um, coming from overseas so if you really like my video feel free to just jump over there um, i will hopefully um, in the next few months be building it up with more content deck techs sideboard guides and things like that at the moment the only sideboard guide is on there is from the agro cats list i played at rtn but obviously once our uk rtn finishes i will be fleshing that out with a lot more content of decks i've seen strategies sideboard guides those kind of things um just to make that more useful for people, as well as my like off the book thoughts on which decks are best and what I'm seeing and what isn't working, um, which I will share on the channel sometimes, but I'm not going to share it always in super detail here. And you may have to go to the Patreon to find my more off the cuff thinking. Thanks a lot for listening and have a great week playing fab wherever you are.